what are your plans for the team this week? Are y'all just going to break up and go your separate ways and visit families and all, or, or will you keep, will some of them stay here together? Yeah, we've got six kids that uh, were not able to get home. I think the rest of them have are either going to their families or going with a teammate uh, home. And, and even the six that uh, said they were going to be here, I think are working on plans to maybe go with teammates. So it could be anywhere from six to zero. But um, I think everyone has, has a plan to, to be with, uh, to be somewhere else other than here for Thanksgiving. Is this kind of a unique opportunity to, to you know, have a week off, Thanksgiving week, and, and you know, get to actually experience that holiday and not go through the normal football uh, situation? It is. It's a little, um, it's an odd week. We're looking forward to it, but it still it makes you. It's almost a feeling around here today that staff and I were talking about this morning that uh, that the season, it, you know, it's kind of a feeling that the season's over. Obviously, it's not, but with school not being in and just being a, an odd schedule, it is a little different. But it's one that I know our coaches are looking for a little break. Um, they put in an enormous amount of hours and uh, are looking forward to spending some quality time with their, their wives and kids, especially, and our kids, I'm certain, are anxious to get away from us for a little while. Are you concerned at all um, that this is, you know, with the way your team is rolling and kind of the, the momentum that you've built, that this is, could be a bad time for a break? A lot of coaches or a lot of teams seem like they like to play when they're winning week to week to week and not have that break. Yeah, you know me pretty well. I, I get concerned about most anything that I think could affect us, and certainly that's crossed my mind. It's not a lot we can do about it. I'm certainly not going to keep them here and grind them, you know, throughout this week. But it, it is a concern. We're going to bring them back Sunday and hopefully knock the rust off uh, with an extra practice. Uh, normally we don't get, to, we don't start really preparing for opponents in practice until Tuesday, a game week, but. Our coaches will stay around tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday morning and make sure we're ready to go Sunday with a Tuesday type practice for Troy. So hopefully that extra day will help us knock off the rust and get us back in the flow. But certainly I think we're playing some of our best football right now and anytime you're doing that you kinda like to get back out there. But you know, everyone has these breaks in their schedules and you have to deal with it and, and get them back ready to play. Is the biggest advantage to the break just you know getting a few guys healed up that, that do have some things? You know, well, fortunately we're, we're pretty healthy, and um, I don't think there's anyone that would be out if we played this week that other than the guys that you're very aware of that have, have been out for a while. So I don't know that we necessarily <coughs> needed it, but certainly it, it kind of will give their minds a break from uh, the grind of getting prepared for a Saturday game. It, did you show a new formation um, Saturday? It looked sort of like a, not like a wishbone, but pistol the, pistol so bone. It was inverted bone. Uh, inverted. Okay. <laughs> was that a new formation that you had sort of held back? Could you maybe just tell me a little bit about it and why you decided to pull it out, uh, particularly last week? Saturday? Well, against middle, uh, we we felt like when we got in that we'd get truly a seven-man box and possibly an eight-man box. Where they would play some man coverage and felt like we could get to the edge out of that formation down in the red zone. And had a couple of other deals out of it when we throw it, which we did. And then the last time we got in there, a quarterback keeper. So, um, you know, we're always tinkering with new formations. I don't always pull them out, but very seldom do we go into a game that we don't have. Uh, some of them you don't probably notice because um, they may not look too different to you guys, but it's either a different personnel or a where we get in a different formation, but we have auxiliary formations that we try to carry one a game that we haven't shown either in a while or at all, and that's that's one of those. Is there a particular name? Have you, is there a name for that formation? Well, we always try to make it fit with everything else we do, so we just, I used to call it Cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, Oklahoma State runs that quite a bit, um, but we, we found that uh, it was probably best just to teach one guy um, to, to our tailbacks, there's two tailbacks in the game. They think of it as pistol, but uh, the tight end that was back there with them, he thinks of it as split, which is another call we have. So it's a combination. What, what advantages uh, do you see to that particular formation? Well, again, I think it depends on how they're going to line up to it. Um, 
against them, I really felt like we could get to the edge. And you know, Frankie scored twice on that formation on, on the edge runs because of the way they, they aligned in the box to it. Um, and it was a simple read for Applin whether to give or to keep. And you had to read one guy. So it's, it, it fits in the same family of if we were just in our two-back stuff, we just had an extra blocker going to the party.